Hello, and welcome to Lesson 2.2 on Solving Absolute Value Equations. And hopefully, this will be a pretty short video, I'm hoping. Um, okay, so yeah, last time we talked about absolute value functions, their piecewise definition, kind of how to graph them, and things like that, right? In this video, we're going to be solving equations. Finally, find x, right? Solve for x, back to that good old stuff. Um, so a quick reminder from last time, remember that the formal definition of an absolute value function is that it is a piecewise function, right? And we define that by absolute value x is given by, uh, I'm going to zoom in here, absolute value x is given by positive x if x is greater than or equal to zero. Remember, that's just the linear parent function x. And negative x, which is really just the same parent function but the negative slope, uh, if x is less than 0, like so. Yeah? Uh-huh. And that's just from last time. Now, I bring this back up here again because you'll notice that because as we define absolute value as a piecewise, there's two pieces. There are, well, that's what this fill in the blank is here. There are two pieces of the function to solve, right? Because we have this V shape. And so you have the right leg as one equation, one piece, but you also have the left leg as a second equation, the second piece, yeah? Uh, and so we want to analyze the positive side of the equation as well as the negative side uh, when we solve functions, or when we solve these equations, okay? Negative, yes. Okay, so graphing to find solutions. Uh, and this was on the homework uh, for 2.1 online, uh, asking you to do this already. But here it is again, kind of in lesson form, maybe so we can kind of go over it, right? Graphing is a technique of solving. You can, anytime you have an equation, if you take the left-hand side of the equation and you take the right-hand side of the equation, if you make the first one a function and you make the second one a function, uh, then you can plot those functions, and wherever they meet, right, so like if I have a function like this, and then a function like this, wherever they meet, those are the solutions to the equation, meaning those, those are the two values that make the function true, because that's where they meet, that's where they cross, so you find the x values where they're the same, right? Uh, so this is one method of, of solving, and we're just kind of quickly going over this to just see it as a method, um, this isn't a big test item, though, okay? Uh, it might, there might be something on the test, right? Uh, but it's really just something useful to think about uh, an alternative way to solve that's really not doing algebra, um, meaning algebraic manipulation, right? Uh, so here we go. Um, the first function, right? We said that this will be the left-hand side of the equation. So my first function is y equals 2 times absolute value x minus 1 minus 3. And as we talked about in the last video, we should know how to graph this function. Uh, I see that this is a shift right 1 and a shift down 3. So the vertex is at 1 comma negative 3 right here. Uh, we also see that the slope is 2. Maybe I should be writing this down. I say the slope is a equals 2. And the vertex is 1, comma, negative 3. And we know that from our transformations, right? Now, slope being 2 means the right leg goes up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, right? And so this is my straight line. Oof, what the heck happened there? Okay, thank goodness. And there's that leg. Uh, and then I can graph the other leg by either using symmetry or the same slope but going backwards. Like so. Okay. Graph this. So glad the iPad makes a straight line. Nice. Okay. So now, um, what's our second function? So I'll do this in blue. The second function is the right-hand side. So y equals 2 thirds x minus 1. And if you remember good old algebra 1, right, that's a y-intercept at negative 1 and a slope of 2 thirds. That means up 1, 2 over 3, 
up one, two, over three. Wait, one, two, one, two, three. Sorry, I'm counting. Down one, two, back three. Down one, two, back. Oop. Wait, right there. There we go. Okay, making sure we got a nice, accurate line. And so then I will connect the line through all the points. There's my function. And you see that they cross at two values. They cross right here and they touch right here, right? And so those functions intersect. Let's see that first point is zero comma negative one. And the second point is three comma positive one, right? Uh, so the y values of this function, uh, or the y values of these intercepts are just where they're equal, right? Vertically where they're equal. But x is, that's the solution. That's what makes them equal, yeah? Because it's the input. So the solutions to this equation are x equals, and I'm going to put a curly brackets here to indicate a set of numbers because I have two solutions here, two answers. First, they intersect at x equals 0, and they intersect at x equals 3. And those are the two solutions to this graph. And that's solving by graphing, which you can do. Um, you can check this, and I really show this as a way to... You can verify this in a calculator, right? If I if I type in the left function in the right side of the equation, if I type that into a graphing calculator, whether that's Desmos or a TI-84, I could verify through these points of intersection, right? Um, so yeah, that's that. Now, how many solutions? Now, if you think about an absolute value function, right? There's three ways we might touch those. Uh, so I'm going to kind of create this. Uh, you know, I'm just going to make a generic V shape like this. Will that do? That, that'll do. And if you'll give me just a second here, I'm going to copy this image so I don't have to draw this three times. Don't you just love technology? I love it. Oh, my gosh. The fact that I'm able to make these videos. Okay. So three, three ways that we could touch this function. The first way is kind of like what we just had. Uh, now, we don't need it. It doesn't have to be a straight line. It could be a curvy line. You can do this, right? Uh, but I'm just going to use straight lines because why not? Uh, the first way is touching twice, right? So uh, the slopes are in such a way that the function, that some other function hits this equation twice, right? Um, hits, hits the absolute value function twice. So this would be two solutions. Right now, all I'm doing is visualizing our solutions, so visualizing what could happen with your graphs, right? So you could have two solutions like this. Um, another way is suppose that one of the slopes is really, really steep, right? So really, really steep. Uh, maybe it looks like this yeah so that's a that's a linear function with a really steep slope and if you think about it uh, right there's a, there's no graph down here this graph doesn't go down because it stops right here so I see that it's not intersecting down here but this is so tall and that and this is not going to be as tall that if I keep extending these out right they are never gonna meet because they're sort of diverging away from each other right they're moving away from each other uh, and so this only has one point of intersection. And so this would be one solution. And then lastly, I might have uh, a function that just never touches, right? I could have like a, it might be below the absolute value function, like so, with a really, really small slope like this. And that would be no solution because these graphs never intersect, these graphs never touch. And I could never touch more than twice, because if I were to do that, well, if I had to touch here, the only way I could touch again is to go backwards, and then that's not a function anymore, right? Vertical line test. So it's only ever going to touch twice. There's really no way I could touch more than that when it's a basic absolute value function like this. Okay? All right. So 
steps to solving. Steps to solving an absolute value equation. So the idea is we're either going to have two solutions, one solutions, or no solutions. And we are always kind of going to – I'm trying to explain this. <laughs> we're always going to get two answers or usually going to get two answers, but that doesn't mean both answers work. So here's the general steps. The first step, you want to isolate the absolute value expression. That means – you want to get these bars alone on one side. Maybe there's some st stuff inside. And then it's equal to something on the right side. We don't know what it is, right? We don't know. But that first piece, isolating the absolute value expression, that's what we kind of did in that last video at the end. Where I said isolate an expression. You're not really solving for x yet. You're just getting the bars alone on one side, OK? Next, you'll create two cases, and I'm going to do that in the form of a sort of t-chart. So you'll be, you'll be seeing me making this t-chart with a positive and a negative side. Uh, and this is because the positive case is the right leg, and the negative case is the left leg. And so you have to consider, right, it's a piecewise function, right? Your absolute value function is going to be piecewise. It's going to be an equation here and an equation here. That means there's two equations to solve for. Once you set up that t-chart, you're going to solve both equations using your good old Algebra 1 skills. And then you will check for what's called extraneous solutions. Now, extraneous solutions, extra, right? That means they're, they're kind of leftover answers. They're extra answers that don't work. They're false. Uh, so this is you'll see what I mean once we get to it. But the algebraic processes we use are usually going to generate two answers. That doesn't mean both answers work. You see, in Algebra 1, the, we work with really simple functions, just x, x squared, and 2 to the x. And we don't really do a whole lot of tests for extraneous. We don't look for false answers because I've, I guess those algebraic processes are usually pretty safe. They're pretty safe. But when we work with more complicated stuff like absolute value x or square root x, or 1 over x. Uh, these are more complicated functions that we're studying in Algebra 2. And so the algebraic techniques sometimes find an answer that doesn't actually work. And you're going to see that as we do our examples here. So, uh, and also I'll explain how to do this. This piece here, um, to check an extraneous solution, you just take the answer, like let's say x equals 7, and then you put it back into the function. You just see if it's true or not. OK, um, and we're going to be using the calculator to do that. So I'm not going to do a whole lot of calculator instruction in this video. So if you really have questions on it, come see me in class. OK, all right. So here we go. Example one, absolute value x plus 3 minus 5 equals 3. So step one is to isolate the absolute value expression. So that is step one, right? Isolate, isolate. Now to accomplish this, I, I notice I have the bars is x plus 3, but then it's minus 5. So I'll add 5 to both sides. Uh, this is so I can create a zero pair with negative 5 and cancel that out. I say x plus 3 in the, in the bars equals, let's see, 3 plus 5 is 8. And so the absolute value expression has been isolated. Yeah, there's, uh, where's my laser pointer? There's nothing here. There's nothing multiplying it. There's nothing adding to it after the fact, right? It's not like 2 plus this or 3 times this. This expression is alone. Now, I create two cases. So 2, create two cases. So I like to make a t-chart. And the t-chart is useful because... It's kind of a visual aid, a visual tool to tell you and remind you that you are doing both because it's very easy to forget to check the other one. So what we're going to do is check the positive case. Uh, and in fact, you know what? I'm going to want to move this over. The positive case where I'm going to say it's the same sign. Okay, it's the same sign. Whereas the negative case... That's the opposite sign, opposite, 
all right? So, uh, if you look at absolute value at, oops, that's not my laser, x plus 3 in the absolute value, right? How is that defined as a piecewise function? Well, remember, absolute value x is positive x and negative x. So absolute value x plus 3 uh, is, I kind of, I keep the first one as positive, x plus 3. That doesn't change. That stays like that. But the other one is negative. And so you're doing negative x plus 3, like this. But of course, uh, I could just distribute this negative, and that would be like negative x minus 3. And so my suggestion is when you work with the negative side, just flip the signs, right? Whatever signs you have on the absolute value expression inside there, just flip them. So here's what this looks like. On the positive case, you have x plus 3 equals 8. You just drop the bars, right? That is that is the right-hand side. It's just x plus 3. It's the same, right? It's the same function as it is inside, x plus 3. But the negative case means it's the opposite signs of what's inside there. So positive x becomes negative x, and positive 3 becomes negative 3. 8, however, that's not part of the function, right? You see 8 isn't in bars. This Only these are in bars. So the 8 stays the same. There, That sign does not change. Now that you've set up these two equations, you can solve them. I see on the first side, x plus 3 equals 8. Well, I just subtract 3 from both sides. I get x equals 5. And that's beautiful, right? I found my answer there. On the negative side, I'm going to also solve for x. So I'll start by adding 3 to both sides. And so then I get negative x equals 11. Uh, I don't want negative x, so I want positive x. So I'll divide by a negative 1 on both sides. Uh, and so this becomes positive x equals negative 11. And so these are my two answers, right? But the question is, do they both work, right? And so this, this step, this was step 3. This was solve. I want to make that a little bit prettier. Step three was to solve. But step four is to check our answers. So step four, check for extraneous. You need to do this every time, every time with both answers. So let's take x equals five. Right? Remember that the expression, in fact, I'm going to write it here again as a reminder. It's absolute value x plus 3 minus 5 equals 3, right? Uh, or really, what I like to do is I like to take the isolated case because it's, it's the same equation, basically. It's, you've just kind of manipulated it. So I'm going to take the isolated case. Here's x plus 3 equals 8. Now, let's check um, that this works, right? Let's plug in 5. So if it's 5, then it's absolute value 5 plus 3 equals 8. Is this true? Well, 5 plus 3 is 8, and absolute value 8 is 8. So yes, true. That means 5 works. We put a check next to 5. Now let's test x equals negative 11. So I'll put it in the absolute value bars. Here's negative 11 plus 3. Is that equal to 8? Question mark. Well, negative 11 plus 3 is negative 8. And the absolute value of negative 8 is 8. So, yes, this is also true, and it works. And now I'm going to introduce a little bit of notation for you. Because I've, I've done all my work and I want to finalize my answer, uh, you'll find that Mr. Spake loves to write these three little dots that look like this. Um, <laughs> this means therefore, all right? This is just a Mr. Spake thing. I say therefore. That's what those three dots mean. Those three dots mean therefore, my solution is x equals what set of numbers? Well, I had negative 11 and I had five. I'm gonna box that. Call it a day. That's my answer. Nice. Okay? And that's all four steps in action. From here, this is where I hand it to you guys in class uh, to try out example two and example three. 
Of course, I'm going to work through these since we're doing the video. Uh, but I do encourage you to, to pause and try this for yourself. Okay, let's try example two. I'll do this in blue now just because, man, it's a lot of red. Yeah, it's a lot of red. So let's isolate, right? The step one is to isolate. Now I see there's a negative two multiplying both sides, or sorry, multiplying the absolute value expression. So I'm gonna divide by negative two. I say, uh, let's divide by negative two here. And so that means we're gonna divide by negative two here as well. I'm both. Right, I'm dividing by negative two across the entire expression. So this cancels out, and by cancels out, that means it makes it a positive one. And so now I have x minus one in the absolute value bar equals to six x over negative two, that becomes negative three x, and 10 over negative two, uh, that becomes negative five. Okay, and now we wanna solve. So two is create two cases. And so I'm going to make my t-chart. Make it nice like this. And so we'll do the positive case and we'll do the negative case. Okay. So see the positive case, remember what you are doing is we're taking this absolute value expression x minus one and we're looking at the piecewise definition. The first one you keep it the same but the second one you flip the signs. Right, because what you're doing is negative of the op right. It's the opposite of the first one, so it's negative x plus one, and so that's going to be what I put here. So I say x minus one equals negative three x minus five. That's the first equation. The second equation, I flip the signs on the inside, negative x plus one. But again, this negative three x minus five, that stays the same. That's not in the bars. It's a really common student mistake to flip all signs across the entire equation. Not true. Not true. Don't do that. Be careful. Now, let's solve for x. So on the right-hand side, uh, I think I'll add 3x to both sides. That way these cancel out. And I'll add 1 to both sides so that the constant on the left side cancels out. So I get x plus 3x is 4x. And five, negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. I'll divide both sides by 4, and I get x equals negative 1. Okay. Now on the other one, let's try this. Let's add 3x to both sides. And we'll subtract 1 from both sides this time. So that these cancel out and these cancel out. I get negative x plus 3x is 2x. And negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6. So then I'll divide by 2 on both sides. I get x equals negative 3. Now, do both of these solutions work, right? Remember, this was, this was step 3. This was to solve. Do both work. So I'm going to come all the way back up here. Here's 4. I'm going to check. Now, I'm going to take the isolated case because it's, it's just easier because it's simplified, right? You've isolated the absolute value expression, so it's easier to check. And the first answer I'm checking is negative 1. So let's try x equals negative 1. I get absolute value negative 1 minus 1. And I want to see, is that equal to negative 3x, where x is negative 1, minus 5? Question mark. Is that true? Well, negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. This is minus 5. And so we say, is this true? The absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2, and 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Uh-oh, this is not true. So it looks like x equals negative 1 does not work. This is an error, right? So that is actually not true. Um... Now let's check negative 3. So say x equals negative 3. So I'm going to do absolute value negative 3 minus 1 equals negative 3 times negative 3 minus 5. Question mark, does that work? So now negative 3 minus 1, that's negative 4. Negative 3 times negative 3, that's positive 9 minus 5. Is this true? 
Well, the absolute value of negative 4 is positive 4, and 9 minus 5 is 4. So yes, this is true. So x equals negative 3 works. Yeah? x equals negative 1 does not, but x equals negative 3 does. So x equals, I say therefore, x equals, oops, <laughs> negative 3. Like so. It's a single answer. Single answer. I don't like that that's a trapezoid. I wanted it to be a rectangle. That's better. Okay. And that's that. I'll clean up this a little bit later. All right. And so that's the importance of checking both answers. I I'm going to go to Desmos real quick to kind of show you. Let's see. It's absolute value x minus 1 equals negative 3x, right? So it's, uh, oh, where's the absolute value bars? Oh, there they are. We said x minus 1, right? And then the other one was negative 3x minus 5. And so you'll see that this graph, they only touch here at negative 3. Look at that. Only one solution. So this is, this is why I showed that graphing piece earlier, right? You could graph both sides of the equation, find the point of intersection, it's x equals negative 3. That's the solution. And that's only one. Only one solution. Finally is example 3. And so uh, this one should be pretty fast, and then we'll be done with the video. Example three, uh, I want to isolate. Right, so step one is to isolate. Uh, so I'll do that by subtracting 12 from both sides. Let's say absolute value x minus 10 equals 7 minus 12 is negative 5. And so then I will, since I have some space here, create two cases. Two cases. Boop, like this. A little t chart beautiful positive case and negative case uh so the positive case is just i keep the bars the same right it's x minus 10 equals negative 5 and on the other side i just flip the signs on the inside of the function so it's negative x plus 10 equals negative 5 and i'll solve both of these so here this was very easy i add 10 to both sides x equals 5 over here, I'll subtract 10 from both sides. I get negative x equals negative 15. Divide by negative 1 on both sides, so that means x equals positive 15. And so that was step 3 to solve. So step 3 to solve. And now for step 4 to check. To check. So let's take those answers, right? Remember... It's absolute value x minus 10 equals negative 5. Uh, if, I if I check x equals 5, I get 5 minus 10. Does that equal negative 5, question mark? Well, 5 minus 10, that's negative 5. Absolute value of negative 5 is 5. Uh, and 5 does not equal negative 5. So, no, not true. So x equals 5 does not work. Let's try the other one, x equals 15. I say x equals 15. Absolute value of 15 minus 10, does that equal negative 5? Well, again, that's going to get absolute value 5. And absolute value 5 is 5, so that is not equal to negative 5. So no, not true. Not true. And so the answer, right? Because both are not true, therefore, no solutions. No solutions. And, and I'm going to introduce this today to you, um, another way to write no solutions is to say that x equals or belongs to the empty set. All right? The empty set. So, so this means a set with nothing in it. It means there's nothing, yeah? So there's no x that makes this true. No solutions. You can write no solutions. I'll know what you mean. You don't have to say x is this empty set business, but I do want you to recognize it in case I put it on a homework or something. 
And that's it, no solutions. Now, <laughs> before I end the video here, did you notice something all the way back here? Did you notice something about this? Notice. 12 plus absolute value x minus 10 equals, it was 7, right? It was 7. Let's think about that. Hmm. 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 What is absolute value again? Well, absolute value, uh, you could say it's a piecewise function, but it also is the distance from zero, which means it's positive, which means the absolute value of x minus 10, whatever that is, this must be positive. But think about that for a second. 12 plus positive number equals 7. Think about that. Can you add a positive number to 12 to get 7? No, you can't. You can't. This is impossible. And if you recognize this is impossible, then you know there are no solutions. And you don't have to do all of that work. So you might be saying, as some people do in, in, in the class, Mr. Spake, if I see that, do I have to do any work? No, you don't. Because you've, you've thought deeper about what the problem means, right? Instead of just blindly trying to remember all these steps for yourself, you are actually looking at the equation, thinking about what the equation says, and making a, conc a conclusion based on those statements, right? Uh, if, there is, if I give you a multiple choice item where I say, hey, you need to show work on this problem, if you will just show something like this, right? 12 plus positive number, does not equal seven. If you will show this or just briefly explain, and I mean briefly, I mean what I've written here is very brief. If you can explain that to me and show me that it's no solutions, you're fine, you're good. You don't have to do all of this, yeah? Because uh, you could have a really complicated expression and you might be able to save yourself some headache if you just think about the problem beforehand. And by the way, if you didn't notice it here, you had a second opportunity to notice it right here. Because if you look at absolute value of x minus 10, I know that must be positive, but it's equal to negative 5. And that's not ever going to happen. So you do have a second opportunity. to. If you don't see it right off the bat, if you have an absolute value expression equal to a negative number, then you know that won't be true. Now, do be careful with this line of reasoning because if this said absolute value x minus 10 equals like negative 2x, well, it's not necessarily true that negative 2x is always negative because like suppose x is negative 1, right? Then now that's positive 2. So careful, careful, careful. Uh, if you have another, if you have an x on this side, it probably you probably can't make a deduction, and so therefore you kind of have to do all this business. But if it's just equal to a constant and that constant is negative, you know it's no solutions. All right, that is everything. Hope this was helpful. I think this was really really good. Uh, I feel I feel good about this video. I hope you do too. So have a great rest of your day, enjoy it, uh, and, and get, get to work on these, try them out. Uh, they're, they're not too bad, I think, they're kind of fun, and yeah.